Jabron's, the war wages on. I have not forgotten about this war against salesmen, okay? I have not given up. And recently, there's been some Yahoo from some chaps in the comments section. Not gonna lie, I've been wanting it to happen. I want to have some beefs. I love haters. It. I enjoy it. Like I, I, I'm a very confrontational man. I cannot help it. And so I got a guy talking shit. And it is time to do a thorough dunking on this motherfucker. Okay. So I should have known this. Learned this guy's name. I could look it up, but I honestly don't care enough because he knows who he is. I told him in the comments section that he was going to get a special video. And this is your special video, bro. You're about to get fucking schooled. Okay. So his argument to me is that I'm full of shit. I'm experiencing the Dunning-Kruger effect, which is, he, I doubt he knows what that means. Um, but like, I have so little knowledge of this shit. Mind you, I'm operating a multi-million dollar plumbing company right now, okay? Right now. Sold millions and millions of dollars in plumbing before I started this business. Have a master license would be by all measures a like certified expert witness in a plumbing court case, right? Like I am an expert in all facets of this. I like to play dumb, but trust me, I am a walking code book. I know every little fucking thing about plumbing. Like, and, like I try to be humble about it, but if you, if you work with me, it don't take long before you realize I know all of it because I've like, I voraciously study this shit. So no, there's no Dunning-Kruger effect. And I've always been pretty humble and like learned from my mistakes and never got like bogged down thinking like I just knew it all. And even in this company, I have, I have pivoted multiple times. So now, to get to the thorough dunking and dismantle these claims, he says that I'm able to charge affordable rates for residential service because I'm operating at a loss. And the only thing that allows me to still think that I'm making money is because my construction side is subsidizing the losses that my service side is generating. Okay, that's the claim. So let's refute that. I have done multiple pricing videos that explain to you guys when I do service, I price at a 50% gross margin, which basically means I figure I overestimate on what it cost me for that technician and a vehicle for the day, what that technician spent on parts and materials for the day. And then I double that fucking number minimum. Okay. That, so I'm already, I'm operating on a 50% gross. Everything I do in service, I double my money and like anything that like, I always am efficient. Like for an example, I had a guy do two toilets last week for $1,850. The toilets cost like two twenty dollars a piece after tax. That's with a seat. Um, you know, we did new bolts, new flange or new bolts, new wax ring, new shut off valve flex lines all together. Like that job cost me like the tech, the toilets, all the materials cost me like $900 or like 925 and we sold it for 1850. Okay. So like, and the tech was there for like four hours and he went on to do something else anyway, but I still figured like his whole day, just in case I went on to do other work. So I more than doubled my fucking money and I'm at a cheaper rate, like, like 1850 for two toilet installs with new shutoff valves and supply lines, you know, and cleanly caulked to the floor and set level and done professionally is a fair rate. And what the reason I did that is because that's how I've always operated in this. So even when I started, like the reason he's wrong about me saying like, I should give up my multi-million dollar construction business and go to do all residential and see if I can do it at the rates I'm charging, which would be a stupid. It's like saying, Hey, Steph Curry, why don't you see if you can be MVP of the league without shooting three pointers? It's like, why would he want to stop shooting three pointers? That's what like makes, you know what I mean? Like, why would you want to give away your biggest asset? But the other thing is, is I have done only residential. Okay. And I did so well at residential that I was able to accrue assets quickly. I was able to accrue employees quickly. I was able to accrue a volume of work. Like I started out doing residential. We were doing slab leaks. We were doing water heaters. We were doing a lot of gas leak shit somehow. Cause I got tied in with the Atmos technician who was giving my cards out to people. And so like, I was doing a lot of gas stuff in residential and I got in with some, like, uh, I got in with, a. Uh, next door app which got like the and don't take this the wrong way like the indian community there's a bunch of like indian people that live in texas which i love the indian people i need to do a video about the indian people because i think they're the best americans but anyway there's like huge indian neighborhoods in capel and like kind of north dallas area like north of downtown that not just well nor, anyway capel and collin county and shit and um 
man, they were good to me, dude. They were good to me. Like, I got in with these, like, Indian people, and there was just dozens and dozens of calls. And, uh, okay, this is going to cross the line here. I'm going to teeter on some shit because I'm going to veer off on this video because I, do, I love Indian people. And, like, I am a southern man, right? So a lot of people, a lot of rednecks will come up to me and say some more racial shit thinking I'm in that, like, you know, with them on that, and I'm not. Although I try not to judge people because, I, anyway, I ain't here to fucking save nobody, right? Like, y y I'm not going to change you. But I found with the Indian people, a lot of people say they're cheap and they want to they wanna negotiate. Okay, <sighs> they're not cheap. Like, they don't want to pay a lot for a little, right? They don't want to pay $700 for 20 minutes of work it's gonna piss them off it's gonna like piss them off like they're not they're gonna be offended like not just like more than they don't want to do business with you like they're going to be mad right but like they're willing to pay seven thousand dollars for a tankless water heater they're willing to pay eighty five hundred dollars for a whole home water filter right they understand that a big job is going to be expensive but they expect a small job to be small and if you if you're if you're fair on the little stuff you get all the big stuff too, right? So for me, fair on the little stuff is a 50% gross margin, okay? And then fair on the big stuff is I'm buying a lot more material, there's a lot more expense up front, especially if I give you a price up front where there's more variables, things could turn against me. So I kind of prepare for the worst when I'm planning a big job, right? Like I'm planning a tankless heater, like I'm planning we're gonna have $2,800 in material, I'm planning it's gonna take me three, four hours of overtime because I'm going to have bullshit with the gas. I'm planning on an extra trip out there to meet the inspector and potentially get the gas meter upgraded to medium pressure to accommodate this. I'm planning on everything going bad, right? But if it turns out we show up and get this motherfucker dunked in four hours, you know what I mean? I just hit a fucking home run. And even if it does take what I plan on it taking, it's still a 50% gross on a fucking $7,200 fucking ticket, right? So no matter what, we do well. And I, that's what I did when I started out. And like, I, you know, I had to abandon my Indian people who I love. I was this close to advertising on the Indian music radio station because those are my fucking people. They're the best Americans, dude. Like they come over here and dominate. And like, they're so like, they're such good neighbors. They don't, they don't bother you. They're fucking, and I know I shouldn't like just stereotype a whole group of people, but like as a whole, my experience with the Indian people and there's Indian people that watch my shit. Well, they used to, when I did scrap metal, a lot of people in India watch, would watch my videos, not anymore. But I thought that was cool as fuck that there was like dudes fucking like a Rajesh over there watching my shit. Dude, that's fucking cool, dude. Anyway, they were good to me. And I made so much money so quickly, I got assets, right? And then once I had assets, I like I took opportunities for construction and I like I didn't want to do it. Like I said, I, you know, like I fought my friends and family on doing construction. I fought them because I didn't want to do it. And they were, and I, didn't, I even fought them on going commercial. I wanted to do just home services. And because I was like, no, I, I don't, I'm tired of the stress. I don't want to go back to the big important shit. Like, I don't want to be, you know, having customers that have like systems critical things that where they're counting on me. And, and I, don't, I don't want to have to do that. I want to have laid back, just small emergencies. Didn't want to do it. Well, like the opportunities kept popping up. And so I started pricing shit the way I price shit at like, 40% gross, 50% gross on like kind of small scale remodel shit. And it was hitting, it was hitting. And so like, I was like, okay, I started doing more and more and I'm still, I was pricing the way I did. And one thing led to another and I started getting six figure jobs and there's videos about this. I'm like, oh my God, I sold my first six figure job. I can't believe it. And that six figure job was a banger. That six figure job cost, that first one I did, it was like 110 actually. And I think it cost me like 44,000, like all things considered. So it was more than 50% gross. So once I found out I could operate at such a high gross margin with such high revenues, it seemed ridiculous to get bogged down picking up two, you know, $400 calls. You know, even if I made that $400 call $700, it's still not going to equal the same revenue I'm drawing from like the, the construction. So why would I want to take that away, right? And then at the same time, what happened is, is my construction got big, I got assets, more and more vans, more and more vehicles, more and more tools, sewer machines, cameras, multiples of everything, you know, like systems is another thing. I've got really good systems for everything. And so it turned into, hey, let's lean into service a little bit more. 
let's lean into it a little bit more. And I had planned on doing residential more about a month ago. And I kind of, I still take residential, but I don't look for it, right? I just let it come to me and a lot of it does. But I set up MSAs with commercial properties, okay? So here's what an MSA is. It's a master service agreement. And the reason like a lot of these big commercial properties use MSAs is because either you have like a big giant facilities where you have facility where you have like this guy in charge of this wing and this guy in charge of that wing and multiple people who can place work orders for things to get done. And you need like, they need to know what like is kind of like know what it's going to cost before they do it. Right. Or it's the other MSAs are for places. that's a big commercial property that has like 50 tenants. And in order for you to work at these big facilities and big properties, you have to have really good insurance. You have to have like million dollar vehicle uh, insurance for every vehicle you have. You have to have like $5 million liability or, or umbre umbrella coverage policy and like 2 million minimum. I, I, I don't know, my insurance is, is, is good enough to work in airports, right? And so you have to have all that and you have to be a vendor on file and then I have to give them an agreed upon rate, right? And what that is, what I do is $98 trip charge. Anytime I come out, it's 98 bucks. And, and anybody else who comes out, if I got two different like vans show up, that's two $98 trip charges. Um, and then it's a minimum of two hours, 150 an hour. And then I charge a certain amount for like a small sewer machine, a medium sewer machine, a large sewer machine, a camera, hydro jetter, whatever. There's certain fees for all that shit. And then it's all just T&M. Overtime, it's a guaranteed three hours minimum, and then it's a port to port. So like, it, that's in the agreement. And I've got this MSA with like four different properties. And so like a random tenant who doesn't know who to call, cause they can't just call any plumber because you really have to be like, you have to have an insurance certificate on file with that property to go work there. So they're kind of obligated to call me. And um, they can just call me and they already know what's going to cost. It's a pre-agreed upon thing. And I dominate on it. Like I, it's set up to where like, I'll go and change a fucking washer on a fucking P trap for 450 bucks. Right. And like you're making good money like that. Um, and so no matter what I do, it's always, all the service is on a 50% growth. So how could I lose money? How could I lose money when I'm doubling it? It's on you to increase your margins to have more money to do shit. Like, so the, the video that I like that that set this guy off that like where he's talking shit and then migrated to one of my videos to call me a clown. Uh, Jared Williams was saying how he has to charge six hundred an hour and he, he listed all this he did all this bullshit math to say I've got eight guys, two office, uh, a shop, overhead, CRM, which he uses Service Titan, which is four hundred dollars a month a guy, advertising. And then you figure in profit margin and this is what it has to be. Well, he's full of shit on a lot of that because you don't figure in every goddamn cost you have. You have to figure out what's your cost of goods. Like what is the cost of goods sold? Okay. Office personnel, CRM, phone bill, shop payments don't go into cost of goods sold. That goes into overhead. Okay. Cost of goods sold is your technician in his van and the materials he used on that job. Okay. That's your cost of goods sold. So you get that price. And then you need to sell that on a 50% margin. And then as you scale, you have more margin to do shit with, but you don't need to act like you got to charge $600 an hour, you know, because you scaled inefficiently and like, like, it's fine if you want to do that and people want to sustain it. This is America, baby. Go for it. I love you. You do do it, but it's not the way it's done. It's not like the, it's not the way you teach it. It's, you know what I mean? Like, it's like you, you do it sustainably. What is this? fucking service call okay yes yeah, so even now it's fucking saturday 9 30 got people calling me for service shit we're gonna ignore that one boys but no you don't put it on your customers that like you're inefficient right like if he's it's like Jared williams could say like no we gotta have leather seats in our vans we gotta have a spa at the office with swedish massagers and so i've got to factor that in and it makes me have to charge 750 an hour and it's like well that's bullshit you don't have to have it. that's a personal choice and then you need to find a way to fit that into your margin i'm not saying there's a going rate right you can set your rates what you want to set it at but like there is a thing called market factors supply and demand and people like what they're willing to pay, right? They're just not willing to pay. Like, I, th I feel like, look, I'm a dumbass. I'm a high school dropout and I own a multi-million dollar business, right? That like in short order, probably in about five years, you know, with what the work I'm doing in the direction we're going and there's a big dog coming over 
I got a, I got like what I think is the most talented HVAC like mind and manager in Dallas, like legitimately the most talented HVAC mechanical mind in Dallas. And he's got, he's going to come over here as a partner, you know, hopefully at the start of 2025. And, um, I've got the money to do it now. I want to be smart and wait for him to come over. But like, you know, we're looking at going to like 10 million a year, you know, revenue in under five years in under five years and on high margins. And the way I got there is by doing this. So to the dickhead that thinks I need to go and be a small business to learn how to do this, it's like, no, why don't you, like, let's compare numbers. You know what I mean? Let's, let's do a Google meets. Let's pull up our QuickBooks, our invoicing software and our bank software. And let's look at real numbers, real costs. Like, how are you doing versus how am I doing? Because I can show you, I can break it down to service calls. I can show you on my QuickBooks, just fucking service. I got different cost code, dick cheese. Let's do this, dude. Bye.